All right, I am so excited about this video and the tips that my friend Allison is gonna give y'all today. This, this video is gonna be great because I know a lot of people love going to Disney World, but they hate paying for it because it just, let's be honest, it costs a lot of money and it can put a big hit on your, on your checking account. Well, or, or credit card, I know some people will charge it. Uh, but Allison has 10 great tips and even some bonus tips to throw in here as well on how you can save big we're going to Disney World. But first, I want to go ahead and let Allison introduce herself and just talk about her business just shortly. Yeah, my name is Allison Weaver. I live in Jackson, Tennessee, and I'm married to Chris Weaver, and we have four beautiful children. Um, I started Kingdom Concierge in 2012, and it started off just being my business, but now we have 22 agents all over the U.S. servicing clients who work for Kingdom Concierge. Awesome. Well, I know the very first tip that we're going to talk about is a big myth buster. I know for me, it was something I did not know when I first heard it. And I think a lot of people watching this video, it may blow their mind as well. But let's talk about being an authorized Disney vacation planner. What does that mean? Right. So that means Kingdom Concierge is a full service travel agency. So whether you book travel to Walt Disney World or to Maui, or to Ireland, we can provide for those needs because we're a full service agency. But the designation of authorized Disney vacation planner is something that was given to our agency by Disney. It even comes with the little logo and you would want to look for that logo when you're looking for your travel agent to plan your Disney trip. Um, it means that our sales are outstanding with them, that we are a preferred agency and we really are in on all the news and know our stuff. So, so the, the biggest thing about that, though, is I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm already paying all this money for Disney. It's already going to cost me so much money. I don't want to then go also pay for a vacation planner. Can you kind of talk about that, uh, that mindset and that, that myth that I think a lot of people think uh, that it's going to cost them a lot of money? Right. So Kingdom Concierge is a fee-free agency. So our services, our planning services come free to our clients as long as we book their vacation. So um, once our client travels, the supplier we book with pays us. You don't have to pay us. And we definitely don't work for the suppliers. We're just selling their products. We work for our clients. And so the great thing about using our agency is that we will plan your trip very strategically, um, very, um, we will look at all the crowd levels and park hours and we will put together a plan for your week that will not only, um, it will save you time while you're on vacation. And um, that being said, once you've traveled, the supplier pays us. So you're not having to pay us for that. Um, other things that come with using an authorized Disney vacation planner is that we get a little heads up on any kind of promos that are out there that Disney might offer the general public. So we really have our ears to the ground. And what we do at Kino Concierge is we have a worry-free booking policy. And that just means that our clients don't have to worry if, a, a, if they book their reservation today, but then in a month from today, um, some kind of new discount comes out. We're the first to know about that, and we're already up, actually in the middle of the night, working on our existing clients, applying discounts. And so they don't even have to know about it or ask about it. We've already worked on that for them. And um, so just know that if you were to book with Disney directly, they're never going to pick up the phone and call you and say, hey, guess what? We can say you don't have to pay us vacation yeah. book last month where we work for you and so we we do that automatically the other thing too like just because you've got a discount to go to disney let's say that we apply a discount tomorrow to your vacation or you found a promo somewhere on your own that doesn't mean it's the best one and so just from all these years of working in the product i'm able to easily tell you okay this this promo will save you more than this promo because Disney doesn't allow stacking of discounts. You have to pick the deepest one and we, <clears throat> we can do that for you very easily. Yeah, that was, it was a really big mindset shift for me. And I think a lot of people, when I found out I could, I would actually spend less going through an authorized Disney vacation planner than I would if I tried to do it on my own, I'd wind up spending a heck of a lot more money. And I would really have no idea what I was doing. You know, they have a lot of Google sites out there. Oh, you could do this and that and everything. But you don't have anybody holding your hand and walking you through this, you know, whole process to making sure that you're getting the best deal for you and your family. So 
that that's one of my favorite tips. The second is like timing. Can you talk about uh, timing with your booking? Right. So if you're looking to save money when you travel, the number one thing would be to book early. So you want to really start way in advance with your plane, uh, planning, excuse me, um, just because let's say that um, we want to book for 2021. I want to book that as soon as those dates are released because that's when the prices are going to be the lowest. And you, once you put down your $200 deposit, um, you are grandfathered into the pricing as it is the day you booked it. So when Disney does increase their ticket pricing and their room pricing, which they do every year, um, typically in February, <laughs> then you are grandfathered into the current, the previous year's pricing. So book early. That's a great tip. Um, and that's, now I have another video that I'm doing talking about, you know, plane flights. So, you know, it's kind of the same thing, you know, you, you, timing is so big on booking. Uh, can you talk about like uh, the seasons of, of when you should go? Sure. So everybody wants to talk about crowd levels, you know, in the Disney fandom. And what I look at, you know, I do look at crowd calendars, but to save the most money, you can see where Disney is um, needing to fill their parks, where their crowds are the lowest on a calendar. And that's where they put the deepest discounts. So if you're looking at late August or September, especially before the end of September, there's about a six to eight week window there that you can slide in and get the deepest discounts possible. And the reason is, is because the crowd levels are low and Disney's trying to entice guests to come into the parks and fill up their hotel rooms and fill up their parks. So um, there's something typically called a free dining discount. It's not guaranteed to happen, um, but Disney will usually, if they're going to do it, they'll slip it in during August and September. They, they may change that next year based on crowd levels, but, but that's the thing about using an authorized Disney vacation planner. We keep up with all of that for you. And that's August, September is usually low because school is in session, right? When school hits back, right? And that's, that usually, ha you know, uh, controls the uh, crowd level. I know you were telling me about gift cards. Can you, can you dive into that and just kind of share with people how they can save using gift cards? Yes. I mean, I actually use this still to this day for my own family and I suggest it to clients who are interested in saving extra money too. So you can pay on your vacation, whether you book with us, our, our agency, or you book with Disney, with Disney gift cards. And why would you do that versus paying, you know, with your credit card or debit card? Well, you can buy those gift cards at a discount sometimes. So if you've ever been to your local Sam's Club or maybe one of your grocery stores like Kroger, um, they will sometimes discount the gift cards. Target, um, if you have a Target red card, they'll discount the gift card. Um, and that way you're saving money on the front end when you're purchasing it, but then it's, you're getting the full value of it when you're posting it on your vacation. Um, at Kroger, I actually like to buy them when it's four times fuel points. So I'm saving money on gas and getting my, my fuel points, but you know, I'm getting the gift card anyway. So as money I was going to spend, why not save a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I know when we would go to uh, Sam's club, our kids, as we're walking out, they had a huge section as we're walking out, big Disney section with pamphlets and the gift cards. And our kids would always go up and, and hug the, <laughs> the flat wall where, where Mickey and Minnie were. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so they, they love Disney World. Um, so let's talk about another really big expense, which is food. Can you kind of dive into that as well? Absolutely. So, you know, it really depends on the family. Um, and how you're best going to save money and how you're gonna dine there. So when I make a decision about trying to um, guide a family and how they should eat at Disney World, I really wanna understand them and their family because my family does not vacation like my best friend's family, right? So um, I know that paying cash for food at Walt Disney World or any Disney theme park is just so expensive. I mean, a cheeseburger can be $18. And so, and if you're wanting to sit down with Cinderella, you might as well go ahead and, and go ahead and know that it's going to be anywhere from $70 to $80 per head. It doesn't matter what you eat if you're going to sit down at, at Cinderella's castle and have dinner with her. So, um, what I do is I so try to get to know the family and just see, okay, how many meals do you plan on eating for the week? And should we ex 
maybe explore the Disney dining plan. Now, I'm not going to just tell you today in these tips that the Disney dining plan will save everybody watching this video money because it may not. And this is where using one of our agents would come in handy. We'll sit down with your family and figure out, okay, should we get a dining plan that could save you 15% on your meals or should you go a la carte and pay cash? And there are restaurants at Disney. Here's one of the tips that I can give you as far as dining goes, that um, some restaurants, no matter what you eat, they charge you a per head price, right? So it doesn't matter if you had the pasta or the lobster, like you're paying a per head price because it's an experience. But some restaurants at Disney are a la carte and you can truly order off a menu and make your meal less expensive or share meals. And so using one of our agents, we can make sure that we pick out meals that will help you save money if you're going to go the cash route. Then the Animal Kingdom, there's one at the Animal Kingdom that's like that. You can go in and order whatever you want without breaking the bank. We actually were just down there in uh, this past October and, you know, it, it was it was nice to be able to go and not spend hundreds of dollars on one meal <laughs> you know, with all of our kids. So um, let's talk about uh, the rooming strategy. Can you get into that as well? Sure. So, um, you know, it depends on your family size. I have four children. And so we learn right away that sometimes a suite or a villa that would actually hold a family of six um, was going to be expensive or it might not work for that specific vacation. And so um, we have learned that there are certain rooms on property that can house a larger family for less money. Um, so I'll go ahead and give you this right away. So you don't, um, it's a freebie. You don't have to call our agency to find out, but um, a family like mine, a family of six, it's actually cheaper for us to stay into connecting rooms at a value resort than it is for us to get a villa or a suite somewhere at a deluxe resort. So um, your travel agent can make sure that your rooms are guaranteed connecting if you're one family, and that's definitely going to save you money um, versus having a villa. Um, there are rooms that hold five people, and so um, you, know, you would wanna work with your agent to find those rooms that have that pull down bed and not just go straight for the suite. I love how you said guaranteed connected rooms because we, we've booked rooms before where we wanted our, our in-laws in the next room if they were watching the kids when we were uh, you know, going to an event or something like that and we'd get to the hotel and the rooms would not only not be connecting but they'd be like two floors in between us. So um, that's big. Uh, all right, so how about working your itinerary with your base ticket? Yeah, so this is something that I do regularly. Um, you know, that it's one of my top saving tips because from someone who's planning your vacation very far in advance and being very strategic about that plan, I can always plan your week with the base ticket. Now, will I always suggest a base ticket? There are times of the year that I think you might benefit from a park hopper just from an experience. Um, point of view when you get there, but I can strategically put together a plan for a base ticket. And what that means, if you're wondering, is you will visit one park each day instead of having the park hopper, which would allow you some flexibility of playing in one in the morning and hopping somewhere else in the afternoon. So we can plan your whole week around one park a day. And that's going to save you anywhere from $75 to $85 per person. That's wow. a big chunk of change for a large family like mine. Yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> so, all right, let's talk about liquid sunshine tax. What is that? This is the one I mess up on all the time. <laughs> so it never fails. It, I, I always have to buy a poncho and it drives me crazy because I have a million in my suitcase in the attic but that I buy. It's called the liquid sunshine tax because I am so, I just forget my poncho. But I tell all my clients, go ahead and bring your own poncho because when you get to Disney, they're going to be about $20 a pop. And so when it's coming, I mean, it's Orlando, Central Florida, it's going to rain. I mean, there's very it's the chance of rain is high. And so you don't want to go back to the room and sit. You want to get the most out of your day. And so you need to put on a really great poncho. Don't buy it at the park. Bring it with you. 
I don't suggest the Dollar Tree ponchos. Let's not save that much money because we do need it to come down further on your legs and, <laughs> and not tear up. You don't want to be wet in a, in a plastic bag, but you want a, a decent poncho that you take with you on each trip. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to save that much. So, all right, so when we go, you know, when we have, you know, two of our kids, you know, they're old enough to walk around and talk and everything. So, you know, we have three. But when we go, uh, especially like somewhere like Disney Springs or, you know, even in the Disney parks, they see the stuffed animals everywhere. You know, they, they, they want the stuffed animals. You know, my daughter wants to wear her costume. She's got a billion Disney costumes that were handed down and, and some she got for her birthday or, or Christmas, or whatever. Um, what do you have for tips on souvenirs and costumes? Well, I think that if you go ahead and you can find this stuff here before you get to Florida. I mean, it's going to be extremely, there's going to be a price increase when you get there, right? But if you look at Target, they have a Disney line now. I've even found our latest Christmas ears at TJ Maxx. And I found Christmas ears at Walgreens before. And I'm, I'm talking like $6 a pair of ears versus $39 a pair of ears. Um, and so what I used to do when my children were young, I would pack all of these surprises in a separate suitcase and I would pull them out when they were there. Cause like you said, they were young enough to want it, but they weren't quite understanding it came from my bag. They just all of a sudden had it. So they were happy. Right. Um, so I, I would say buy those things in advance. Um, there's too much good stuff out there, even on Etsy to not, Go ahead and take care of some of that. But then to go back to the Disney gift card situation, if you're buying some Disney gift cards, you know, at a discounted price, you could also give a child um, a Disney gift card and know that you've saved 10% or 55% or whatever on that card up front. And so you could use that to pay for your souvenirs if you had to when you got there. No, that's a great tip. Uh, I didn't even think about that. So when we go in the, uh, when we've ever gone in like the, uh, the fall or even summertime, you know, it's, it can be very hot down there. You're walking around, it's an outdoor park, you know, sweating, or like, even if you're like at your, at your place in, you know, in the summertime, if you're going to enjoy like a pool area where you're at, it's going to be hot. And, and I know a lot of people can, like our family goes through water, like it's going out of style. Like we have a water shortage or something. <laughs> what do you have for tips on that, on, on not having to pay for bottled water and all kinds of stuff? Right. Well, um, you can definitely take your own water in, in any beverage into the park as long as it's not alcohol or a glass bottle. So I'd highly encourage that. Um, the strollers that we rent from a, a company there in Orlando, you can actually even add a case of bottled water onto your stro stroller rental for, I want to say it's like $8 or $9 for the case of water. That makes sense to me too, to go ahead and have that delivered when your stroller is delivered. Um, but yeah, definitely bring that stuff along with you. But um, there are a lot of grocery delivery services out there that can have your room stocked with snacks, with waters. Um, you just need to go ahead and talk to your travel agent about it, but you can order some of that in advance and then they can deliver that to the resort. That's awesome. I didn't even know that. I, I'm learning here as, as you're, as you're giving these tips, I'm continuing to learn. I'm like, like, I see the dollar signs just going down and going down. I love it. I'm, I'm all about, saving money and having fun at the same time. All right, so what about flights? I, I know this is a, bon a bonus tip here because we've already given 10 tips, but what about, about some tips on flying and, and what you should do? Right, so um, for my area, and this might not translate to the people watching this, but I, lo I love Southwest. I think Southwest Airlines um, is a great way to travel to Orlando, especially from Tennessee. Um, you know, the, the rates can be anywhere from 140 round trip to 220 round trip. You might find them more than that, but just watch them and book them in advance. They usually let them roll them out six months in advance. But the reason I fly Southwest is a lot of times because of the two free bags. And so I will put some of those non-perishable food items, um, you know, anything that I can get in that extra suitcase. Maybe it is my souvenirs that I bought at TJ Maxx. Like I use those that two free two suitcases to fill up when you're um because you get on pinterest or you're on these blogs right and you see that you can have a christmas tree in your room and i started researching who could put this christmas tree up for me and disney will do it for you know hundreds and hundreds of dollars they will put a tree in your room but i just packed my own artificial tree in a suitcase i want to say it was like a six foot tree <laughs> 
<laughs> I got it in one duffel bag and it flew for free to Orlando. So um, I, I love, <laughs> I love awesome. that. Yeah. And then, you know, when you're trying to decide if you want to fly or drive, you have to, of course, factor that your driving time in, your gas in, but also factor in the fact that they're charging you to park at the resorts now, not just on in the parks. And so, um, you know, if you fly in, at least you are within the Disney bubble, but you get the complimentary magical express airport transfers to and from the airport. So it's so nice to not have to pay for a transfer over there. You're not paying for parking when you're on property. So I love to fly. I think it's a great way to, to get to Orlando. Yeah, that's another great tip. Well, has, has there anything else that has come to your mind uh, that you wanted to throw out there? Yeah, so um, I really think that time is money when you get to Disney. Um, I will say that one of my first trips as a newly married um, was a disaster. We had no plan. We called Disney directly. We booked it over the phone. Um, we, we did so many things wrong. I spent so much more money. And, you know, unfortunately, I learned the hard way, right? So in life. <laughs> and that was one of the things I learned the hard way. We overpaid for everything, and then we spun in circles when we got there. And so from that moment on, I realized I have to have a plan. And when I take my family down to Orlando and I spend the money on this vacation, I want to know where I'm going, when I'm going. I want it clear and concise and strategic. And so that's my, my main last point is time is money and you need a plan. And that leads back to us, Kingdom Concierge, because we will be that agency that will help put together a plan for your family that will make your vacation even more magical than you ever could have done on your own. Yeah, you know, for me, time, time is money. And, you know, I want to, time is our most precious resource. Uh, and I mean, there's, you can't replace it. Once it's gone, it's gone. So from, you know, sp you know, spending time with your family and enjoying yourself while you're down there, but all the way to like backing it up to where you're planning for it, I'd much rather have a, a free service when I'm not having to pay for, you know, like, like your service to take all that time off my hands. So I'm worry free. You're booking it. You know what you're doing. I have no clue at all. And it's going to save me money. So it's, you're saving me time and money you know, by using your service. So um, thank you so much. I'm going to drop your links uh, in the description of this video so people can be connected to you and be able to reach out to you to use your service. So uh, that way, um, I, I know you, you've given so many free tips out here, but I know you just know so many other ways you've been doing this for a while for people to save and just help a lot of families out, be able to enjoy their time at Disney with their family instead of having to worry about the money that they're spending while they're down there. So uh, I'll, be Alton, honest, I'll be honest, planning trips, you know, planning Disney trips are, are fun, right? Just know that we do not take that fun away from you. And we hold your hand. We make sure that you're up to date on all the deadlines. You're not going to miss a deadline, but you're involved in the process if you want to be. So um, as, if you want to be as involved and just be all over that itinerary or if you need to step back because you're a professional and have a job that you can't look at, it, it's okay. We step in either way and we'll roll with your planning style. That's awesome. Well, Allison, thank you so much for taking your time to share these tips. Y'all check out her links below. And I hope this video was very helpful.